שלום, שלום אורי ספרי, שלום תנ"ך, עיניי ישראלים. Now we get an opportunity, get an opportunity to touch on something that we've seen in this particular um, Christian publication here that's called uh, Tomorrow's, Tomorrow's World and it's dated um, September to October 2011 and it can be received for free from tomorrowsworld.org and this is what's on the cover of this particular issue right here speaking about the dangers of occultism the dangers of occultism now of course this is being spoken of from a white western gentile christian perspective but judging the truth about their comprehension and grasping of the true interpretation of the word this is one of um one of the preferred um ministries out there that's not um, an Ethiopian or Ethiopic or Black Hebrew or or from our own root that has a lot of truth to what they're saying in some very interesting articles. Now this one right here, 9-11 plus 10, this is what really caught our attention when we had opened this particular magazine to 9-11 plus 10, right? Um, and we know that we're coming up to what they call the the tenth anniversary of the, the the terrorist attack of um 9/11. Now we looked through the particular article. It's a very interesting article. It touched on the first attack, which we touched on in the earlier uh, earlier recording, um, as well as the war on terror and the Arab Spring concerning the Arab Spring. What's next? The changes that are coming in Europe, as well as uh, section here, a vulnerable United States, where they have an interesting graphic here from secure to broke, in debt to bankrupt. Let's see if we can give you a, cl a clip of that. You can see right there a kind of interesting graphic right there. That is, if we judge by that, like speedometer, speedometer it says below bankrupt. In other words, America is beyond um, bankrupt and bankruptcy so forth and so on. Now this is the so-called Arabs and um, what's up 10 years later? What's up 10 years later after 9-11? Um, now something that we found particularly um, particularly interesting and let us uh, uh, get into get into this um, right here is we, we decided to do some of the math on this uh, 9-11-plus-10. You understand? Once again, just show you this article by Dexter B. Wakefield. 9-11-plus-10. Very interesting, you know, 9-11-plus-10. And we haven't heard many people talk about 9-11-plus-10 in that way, particular way. But when we heard it, we said 9-11-plus-10. Hmm, that's interesting. 9-11-plus-10, especially the way it was written out instead of numbers. It was written out 9-11 plus 10. So we were thinking about it. Actually, we got this magazine probably a couple of days ago. It came in the mail a couple of days ago. And um, we just had a chance to skim through it, some very interesting articles in it. Um, but still, the 9-11 plus 10, the whole idea of 9-11 plus 10 just seemed to stick in our in, in our minds, you know, like I said, there's something, there's something more to this 9/11 plus 10. What's the, what about 9/11 plus 10? You know, when you, when you, when you, when you're grasping in a sense for something, it's almost like you know it, but you can't retrieve it. Actually, certain spiritual forces probably don't want it to be retrieved, don't want it to be found out. But it came to us. Basically, the, the the revelation did. This is ten years later. Why are they so focused, right, on this whole memorial thing for 9/11? They said it has to be this way. It has to be that way. And now this threat of a possible terrorist attack from the new top Al Qaeda guy who was talking about um, Ayman Al Zawahiri or one of these. I think that's him. I'm not too sure, but they said he's releasing it. Um, 
a word that now is the time to do something. They said that in Bin Laden's uh, files and videos, they found it also being talked about that the 10th anniversary will be an ideal opportunity to do some sort of attack. So everyone is, there's a lot of anxiety, this high anxiety, even around the whole idea of September 11th now. Now, we were some of the first to really recognize that when it happened in uh, 2001, while George Bush was the president of the United States of the corporation, um, that that was Ethiopia's New Year, that it was Ethiopia's New Year Day, usually on September 11th, but this year, this particular year, September 11th, 2011, is actually on the next day, or September 12th, and we've done some videos covering some of the aspects of, of that reality, you understand, from the heavenly as well as from the temporal and using the scriptural as certain references. But 9, 11, plus 10, what's up with that? Let's see if we have an opportunity. Now, we've, we've touched on this already, the four Gospels and the pillars, the four Gospels to really speak about what's significant about the Ethiopian um, calendar as well as the calculation of time. But when we get to the 9, 11, plus 10, we had to go biblical in order to really decipher it. First of all, let's go back. Before we go forward, we have to um, reflect and review. This is what review is. So let's, let's, let's reflect and review. 9-11, September 9-11, the day, 2001. That's when the, the attack and Twin Towers and, and all of that had occurred, right? Now it's 10 years later, so therefore... Writers like uh, Dexter um, Wakefield has published a very interesting graphic even is associated with it. And just to show you once again, you understand, um, there it goes, 9-11 plus 10. And you can see with the lights going up, it's not a thousand points of light just yet, but it's two points of light. Now that whole light show thing, something that Hitler did. Hitler did the same kind of light show thing, and you can see that some of the old black and white videos, and those are actual lights going up into the actual sky. But here they only have two particular points of light, and you see that area where it hits the clouds. You understand very ominous, um, ominously, it's suspicious, right? But in reviewing first, before we go forward, and none of this article touched on that. We were somewhat disappointed because we expected maybe they're going to reveal something in that particular article concerning, you know, 9-11 plus 10. What is the plus 10, and, and why is this 10-year anniversary? They, they keep talking about the 10-year anniversary is so very important, the 10-year anniversary, but what about the 10-year anniversary? So in reviewing, before moving forward, first of all, we had to do simple math. We had to actually write down in our, in our mind 9-11, like 9-1-1 plus 10. So, so do that for a moment. Take a piece of paper, you understand, or, or if you can write in your mind, which is one of the Kabbalistic um, sorts of um, exercises, you know, to, to the fire and the flame letters so forth. So very, very, very important for mental focus and mind focus to reclaim your own, your own divine mind. But you can do it in your mind or just take a piece of paper, write down 911, you understand, 911. Plus, plus 10. And, and do the math and, and, and tell me what you come up with after you do the math. We're going to do it right here for sight sample. You understand? So it's 9, 1, 1, plus 10. And what do you, so you bring down the 1. Um, the 1 and the 1, you understand, uh, makes 2. And then you have 9. So you will have something like this. You should have something like this, 9, 21. When you do it, it should be something like that, 921. Is that what you came up with, hopefully? Okay, 921, right? So what's up with 921? Some people might say, well, that would actually be 12 and 3. Now, 3 is the square root of 9. Now, we know when you add the 9 plus the 2 plus the 1, you come up to what? what, what what's that number? What's that number you come up to? 12, right? And the 1 plus 2 is what? The 1 plus 2 is 3. And 3 is the square root of 9. But 9, 1, 1, let's go to Revelation. Because Revelation reveals 
revelation reveals the truth, right? That's what it said. Revelation reveals the truth. So let's get our sacred scripture and let us pray and ask the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to illuminate our understanding. Amen and amen. And when we go to Revelation chapter 9 and we go to verse 11, and I don't know if you ever went there before, you understand, in connection with 9 11. If you go to Revelation chapter chapter nine verse eleven, here's what it reads: Chapter nine, chapter nine verse eleven reads, "And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon." Now this is very interesting in itself. Because some would say that Revelation was written in Greek, right? Others would say, no, 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 no. They, they were Hebrews. Revelation was written in Hebrew. But I say to you that Revelation must have been a, a, a revealed or written in a language other than what we call today's Greek and what we call today's Hebrew for the very fact that within the actual um, document itself, there is a translation or interpretation. That's like somebody writing, I'm writing to you in English, and I'm telling you what something is in English as though you didn't know what this means in English. Normally that wouldn't be so, especially in a document such as this in Johannes Rai, which is interpreted as the vision of Yah's grace, of Jah's grace, of the great I Am's grace, but is also known as the Apocalypse, is also known as the book of Revelation. So here in 9-1-1, or 9-11, you understand? 9-11, chapter 9, verse 11 says, and they had a king over them, and there was a king over them. Now what's interesting is that this, this chapter right here is speaking about the fifth trumpet and the first woe. The first woe. Now, it's very interesting that if you now put that into connection with the events of 9-11, the interesting thing that you will see is that it's speaking about war. It's speaking about a time, it begins off about the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit to this particular angel was given the key, a key, right, of the bottomless pit. What? What's the bottomless pit? A pit that has no bottom, that has no, it, it, it's bottomless. I mean, on one level you could say maybe it's a black hole. Uh, I mean, even a pit, a regular pit has a bottom to it. That means that if you fall into such a pit, you are almost forever falling and never reaching rock bottom because there is no rock in it. And now the rock, metaphorically speaking, is Christos, is Christ. So this, this pit, you understand, we interpret this pit in this sense. Besides being an actual physical world pit, since this book is a book of, of, of symbology, of ancient uh, um, mythology and mysticism to be interpreted within its Christological sense, there's this bottomless pit, right? And then it says, and he opened the bottomless pit. It's almost like a kind of a Pandora's box in a sense. And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now, here's what's interesting, that when 9-11 occurred and happened, the people on the news were talking about after the buildings fell, there was a pit, and this pit was on fire. Remember, if you recall, it was on fire for days. Literally, this fire kept burning and smoldering, and they had, like, x-ray, like, satellite images, and it showed there were all these were the hot spots, and these spots were still burning for days afterward. I mean, this is, most people would accept that it's true because their understanding is kind of like bottomless. There's no firm place, so they're just falling for it, so they continue to fall for the lies that come through the media and the psychological attacks and, you know, playing with people's emotions and their minds and their willpower, you know, 
um, um, the law of Thelema kind of, because they're manipulating people's will. But if you just look at the Revelation in that sense and say, okay, 9-11, that pit that was at ground zero for days and days and days smoldering and burning, we, we, we get a picture of this partially in Revelation. There's a connection to it, and we should not ignore the connection. We're not saying that this is the end-all and be-all of this particular interpretation, but we want to show you how this is all very interesting and leads us to understanding the whole 9-11 plus 10, um, the riddle of 9-11 plus 10. Now, it goes on to say, and they came out of the smoke, locusts upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of earth have power. In other words, the power in that sense, properly interpreted, is the sultan. The sultan, like the English word sultan, but the sultan. Sultan in the Ethiopic and the Gutas and the Amharic, it means authority. So these scorpions were given authority. Now what's interesting is if we can show you some pictures, we don't have too many pictures, but there's another picture in the same magazine that, that talks about, um, let's see if we get a shot of this. Prophecy, you see? Prophecy comes alive. And you see that picture right there of the helicopter? It looks like a locust. It looks like a scorpion. It has that kind of look. And a lot of these, these um, military technology is actually based on God's creatures, God's living creatures. And they actually study these creatures and then create technology that kind of um, um, like counterfeit, counterfeits it or mimics it. You understand? So the scorpion should not be understood just in the sense of scorpions, the physical creatures, but when Johannes, John, produced Johannes, saw this in his vision, when this was revealed to him, he was seeing now into the future. You know, he was basically seeing our day this particular day, and even days to come. He was seeing these days, and the only thing he could compare it to was things that, and for example, if you saw that thousands of years ago in a vision, and you saw how it operates, and you saw what it does when it shoots missiles and so forth and so on, what would you have called it? You couldn't call it a helicopter. You wouldn't say it's a United States military helicopter, because you know anything about United States, you understand, or their military or a helicopter. You understand, that was outside of the paradigm of language then. But if you saw such an image, of course, you would liken these things to what you already knew from the natural world around you. So now it was seeing things in the future sense, prophetic sense, and likening it to what Johannes or John, the evangelist or the revelator, John the Revelator saw in his particular time. So now when we look at this whole 9-11 plus 10, we see at verse 3 it says, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. So out of that smoke, when the, what did Bush say? Remember what Bush said, President Bush? He went down to ground zero. He got on that bull horn. He got on the bull horn, right? And he said, like, when the smoke, all that clears, he said something to that effect. They were talking about when the smoke of this clears and everything, um, I hear you, and, and, and they'll hear you, and the people who tore down this building will hear all of us. And everybody was like, yay! All the Americans was like, happy. They were like, so they didn't like Bush in other ways. They said he was a strong president. We needed a strong president that could respond, blah, 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 blah. Now, it said, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and to them were given power in the sense of authority, an authorization. Remember the 9-11, the bills that were passed, and the other thing that authorized war? That is the power. The power now was given. You understand? The power was given. And as scorpions of the earth has power, just like scorpions have power, what do scorpions do? They have the authority to use its own defenses and offenses to attack, to strike, to bite, so forth and so on. And the scorpion is a very important symbol within um, the scriptures that's mentioned because of that power or authority it has. But then in verse 4 it says, And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. Now, 
unlike World, uh, not World War, what was it, Vietnam, unlike the Vietnam War, where they burnt down and napalm and all those things, right? Remember what they did out in, in Vietnam? They didn't do that. So where it says, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass or the earth, neither any green thing. No green thing are they to hurt, neither any tree. Now, out when they went out to Afghanistan and they went out to Iraq, they really don't have no green thing. They don't have no green tree. You understand? Even their poppy only gets a little bit green, but they don't have any green thing. So this is also interesting, the connection now that we find in the, quote, 9-11. But only those men, only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, this is a little bit more religious here, and we'll have to look at Islam and Mohammedism, and we have to see, do they have the seal of God in their forehead? They would say that they do, but from a, a Hebrew Christian or Judeo-Christian or biblical per perspective, they don't. So that's also another connection. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man as a torment of five months. Now, you can interpret that as you would like, and we're not going to get into that aspect of the five months, even though in some senses the real, um, how, how long was the period of the war when they went over there? Though they've been over there ever since, but the real fighting, you understand, how, how much time was that? You understand, but let's continue to go forward. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. You know, they talk about a lot of these terrorists and, and a lot of these people, suicide bombers, so forth and so on, and many of them have even confessed that, yes, they were taught to desire and seek death and so forth and so on, but some of them were not able to find the Guantanamo is another kind of example there. But it says, and the shapes of the locusts were like to horses prepared to battle. And with the shape of these locusts, how the locusts look, if you look at the military helicopters and you look at the shape of the locusts, you can put them side by side. When you see them going forward in their battle array, they look like horses charging, you understand, in the so-called cavalry, you understand, the cavalry, you understand. Um, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. We saw, we saw a video one had did a video where they actually showed that on top of some of these helicopters, they have a, like a silver part, and when it goes out there like in the air and the clear, the clear sky, the sun bounces and reflects off it. So even though it's silver, it's a communication device they use, it reflects like gold. And when you look at the front of the locust or the helicopters, you see a man's face, which is the, the pilot of the helicopter has a man's face. And when you look at how the man's face looks in the modern equipment with those goggles or glasses, it looks like some of the, like the old movie, The Fly. You ever seen that movie, The Fly, how he had the big kind of eyes, the bug eyes? But it's the same way that a pilot also looks in some of the pilots of the helicopter. So they have faces of men, and they had hair as hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Now, it's interesting because when you see the planes be doing not the chemtrails, but those trails of, of, of you know, of smoke and, and scraping the sky and exhaust, so forth and so on, um, and when they shoot out the, the, what you call them, they look like individual braids, you know what I'm saying, when they shoot out the missiles, and then also the teeth of lions from World War II, they painted on the, on the planes and everything, these kind of animal and, and, and shark teeth and all this kind of decoration that they put on these planes. And now 9 and 9 says, and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. They're, they're, they're breastplates, you understand, they're like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. So when you hear these planes, these military planes, you understand, they, they give you the sound, the roar of the engines. Sounds like horses, actually. Sounds like, if you notice something, whenever they have people hear hurricanes or, or tornadoes, what they always say, they say that it sounds like, um, it sounds like a locomotive. You understand? It sounds like an engine, some sort of locomotive. 
Now, if we didn't know local motives, the first thing you would equate that with is like horses, like a bunch of horses just galloping. You understand? It has that because you don't, you not able to say it's an engine, a machine, I know. You, you don't know that it's a machine. You know what I'm saying? To borrow the Italian word for machine, machina, that's used in Amharic as well. But now, verse 10 says, and they had tails like to scorpions. In other words, if you notice the military planes, a lot of them have their stingers in the tail of the plane. You understand? And their tails are just like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. There were stingers in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. Was to hurt men five months. Now, that might be one of the most cryptic parts of it. Because people say, well, what does that five months symbolize? Remember, it says a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. So perhaps to do the math of that, you have to say if a day is like a thousand years, then what is five hours in a day? What, the, what was five hours of a day, whether as a thousand years or another formula to, to look at. And I've heard some very interesting um, speculations of what these five months would be. But let's put a question mark there and let us come back to it. Now, we've covered verse 1 to 10. Now when we get to 11, we find it says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Now, Bush, Jr., said something very interesting, and we might get to see him and him and Obama at um, ground zero, but he said something very interesting when he won, or when he took the election, you know, when the court decided in his favor over Gore in the presidential election. Remember what Bush said? Bush had this speech, something about that there's, there's an angel over this chaos, there's an angel that rules over this storm. He said something about a storm and an angel that rules over this storm. We recorded, some of you all might know exactly what the speech is, and if you rec remember when and where he gave that, just let us know, hit us up for comment or something like that. But we, we know we heard it, we heard his voice. It was in this video about the whole um, hanging chads and the stealing of the so-called election back in um, 2000 and everything, where he says that, that there's a storm and there's an angel that governs, there's an angel that's over this storm. Now, remember, this was 2000, nearly a year or so before the World Trade Center attack, and he would give this very cryptic sort of speech about a storm and there's an angel that governs this storm and so forth and so on. Now, here, remember they were talking about Bush even at 9-11 when he went down to ground zero, that it's like, uh, remember, um, what's his name, uh, Chris Matthews, if you go back to some of the old MSNBC videos and stuff like that, they were talking about, even Fox News, like he's like a king, and like, like it's King Bush, you know, like, like Bush is like a king. They were likening Bush at the time of the 9-11 attack in 2001 to being like a king which is the, another key indicator. Now, the important thing about this particular verse, 9-11, is that pit. Because in a sense, the, the pit at ground zero is, in a sense, bottomless because all of that land down there at ground zero is landfill. Basically, they, have, they, they put a lot of garbage there and other stuff and stacked up. That's man-made. All, all that lower Manhattan was extended you understand, back in, the, back in the days, they extended it for the seaport and the trade and the mercantile travel, so forth and so on, to fulfill that part of the Leviathan, Leviathan prophecy. So, in a sense, they said that below ground zero, you understand, was actually the ocean. The ocean is basically below ground zero. At a certain point, it basically went down into ocean, so they had a, a, a to use a euphemism, a hell, of a, a hell of a job, you understand, filling up and getting all that ready. But so the pit at ground zero is actually bottomless, technically speaking, because it's not like a pit somewhere else where the, it goes down for a while and then you reach some solid earth. The below ground zero is actually the ocean. It's all landfill. So that pit was actually on fire. Perhaps the water and whatever other stuff is down there was on fire for like days. I think for more than a week or two or so, but at least 
for more than almost seven days, it was literally on fire. And they kept talking about it, that the smoke was coming up. And when it first happened, it was like it did darken out in many places the face of the sky. You know what I'm saying? All you saw was that smoke. They said you could see it from outer space. So that means aliens, you understand, could see it. You understand? Extraterrestrials or celestials could see it as well. So all of this right here in Revelation 9, 11. Now, what were we saying? 9, 11 plus 10. Let's bring this back, show you this again. This is the math that we did. So you got to do the math. 9, 11 plus 10. Because that's part of it right there. And then the next part of it that we have was from this article right here by Dexter Wakefield, 9, 11 plus 10. Right? So we have 9, 11. That's the first part in the review. And then we have, now, what's the plus 10? Well, the plus 10 is 10 years later, the 10-year anniversary. And now they're talking about all the anxiety about making sure that it has to be absolutely right. They have to do it and bring all these things together. And, you know, because it's so important, the 10, everybody keeps saying, the 10-year anniversary is so important. Why? Just because it's 10 years? Why is it so important? What about this 10 years is so important? So in doing the 9-11 plus 10 and doing the math of it, we came to 9-21. So when we're trying to figure this out, we say, well, 9-11, could it mean Revelation chapter 9, verse 21? Could that actually be it? So we said, okay, here's the key. Does chapter 9, we asked ourselves at the time, does chapter 9 have, um, have, uh, have, have a verse, a verse uh, 20? One, this chapter 9 of Revelation. And look what we found, my brothers and sisters. If you look down here, that's all it has. In other words, if you look down down right here, right here where, where the finger is, and it con concludes up here, that's it. That's verse 21. Verse 21 is the last verse. It doesn't have a, a 22nd verse. It doesn't have 20 verses. It has 21 verses absolute hit right on the head and I said hallelujah but here's, here's the weird thing when I read it again just to remind to be reminded okay what does Revelation 9 21 really says what's the mystery of this 9 11 plus 10 really all about here's, here's what it says let's cut to the chase verse 21 which is a continuation of verse 20 but let's just go into verse 21. This is what we read. It says, Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Period. Wow. It says that they did not repent of their murders, or their sorcery, which is the pharmaceuticals, the pharmakesis. The pharmaceuticals is the sorceries. You understand? Go look it up in Greek. It tells you pharmakesis. Look this up in the Greek. Pharmakesis, pharmaceuticals equals sorcery. Sorcery equals pharmaceuticals in its etymological and root meaning. Now, there's connotative nuances, but getting to the roots, let's get to the roots of it. Pharmaceuticals is sorceries nor of their fornication. What is the fornication, brothers and sisters? The fornication is the pornography. It's porn. And you could call it pornication. Let's call it, if we call it pornication, would you understand it any better? Of their fornication, not just the, 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 the triple X-rated stuff, you understand, although that's out there, but it's the fornication and the pornification that has gone mainstream. That's actually a part, of, a part of everyday life. You have to be down with this to really be down with this. You understand? In other words, you know, even as a so-called good Christian woman, you can dress like a harlot and a whore as long as you go to church and you have a, quote, good heart, quote, good heart, quote, good heart. What? You understand? Anyway, nor of their thefts. I mean, need we go into detail? I mean, where would we begin? With thefts. I mean, the whole founding of America was based on theft. I mean, if the truth be truth. See, a lot of folks don't want to deal with that truth. They want to deal with a make-believe. 
that means they're not going to believe or comprehend what is coming on them, nor of the signs that the Almighty in his mercy, even the floods and the fires and everything that's going on now for America is all a warning sign. It's a wake-up call. It's a wake because yes, God did bless America. That that is true. God did bless America when the lost sheep, I and I ancestors, so called black people, the 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 Beta Israel was taken into captivity. We are the blessing of America. Why is that economic debt crisis? Because they never fulfilled their word. They broke contract. They broke the covenant. They broke the agreement. No forty acres and a mule. No reparations. You know what I'm saying? No nothing. You know what I'm saying? Continue to hoodwink and bamboozle, you know what I'm saying, the so called free nigger slaves. And now, and now, and now, they blame the niggers for their own condition. Oh, niggers don't want nothing right. Oh, that's how black people are. While these people, generally speaking, overall, the context of the reality for the lost sheep, you know what I'm saying, is that they are deceived is that they have been deceived, they've been hoodwinked and bamboozled, you know what I'm saying, into this present, quote, unreality reality, you know what I'm saying, into this virtual reality, you know what I'm saying, where they don't know or they don't even want to know the truth, you know what I'm saying, but anyway, 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 let, let, me, let me just get into this right here. I want you to understand how exactly what is going on, because this verse, in verse 21, to now complete the 9, 11 plus 10. Let's go to verse 20. It says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands. In other words, they didn't repent of what they did. I mean, now you're getting people so deluded that like they are praising America, you understand, as though America is a divinity, like America has become like a person, a symbolic person. And in a sense, it has. In a sense, there is a corporate reality to America that people have become invested in. So, therefore, America has done no wrong. Never, ever done nothing in the world that would cause anybody, you understand, to be somewhat upset enough to do a little bit of what they have done to other people. I mean, what kind of delusion? And then you have the preachers and the pastors that are buying into that lie, too. Well, what they've done and what they do when they do that, they've cursed their own soul. They've, they've cursed themselves. You know what I'm saying? While the Almighty in his mercy, what we're looking at here in Revelation is the Almighty's mercy because then there's a sixth, there's a sixth trumpet, right, at verse 13. Well, at verse 12 it says, One woe is passed, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Now, if the 9-11 is one of the woes, if, that, if, if this interpretation, that that's one of the woes right there, then that means there's two more. I, I don't even want to imagine what these two more can be, but Revelation gives us some, some insight into it. Verse 13, which introduces the sixth trumpet, says, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. Gotcha. The four, the four horns. Now, the altar that is before God, which altar that is before God? It is the altar of Itan. It is the altar of incense. Aretuante Barukne. Baruk Ata Adonai. Amen, amen. Now, this altar. And when we, the only way you can understand this altar before God, because this is all tabernacle construction. This is all tabernacle. Revelation is speaking about the tabernacle in heaven, which Moses got to get a glimpse of, and therefore he made the, the, the mirror image. He made a mirror image tabernacle as above, so below. This is what Moses did when he got to see that tabernacle in heaven or became acquainted with the the mysteries or the wisdom of the Egypt, so the wisdom of the Egyptians. He got to see, he got to see this tabernacle. Now, here in verse 13 of chapter 9, it says that the sixth angel sounded, and I, speaking of Johannes, he heard from the four horns of the golden altar or the golden altar of incense, which also has this same kind of um, similar shape. 
this square shape. You understand like the cardinal points of the zodiac, and notice it says the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, which is before the Ark of the Covenant. There is the altar of incense, the altar of Itan, and the cannabosum, the cannabis, was one of the sacred elements of that holy incense, that holy Aishans, that holy Itan. You understand? Verse 14, saying to the sixth angel, which had the sixth trumpet, which had the trumpet. So there was a sixth angel, which had the trumpet. Now, what is very 